Peacemakers, Tim Tebow, Kirk Cameron, and an ex-cop who now fights the demonic. That and more coming up. Welcome to Newsmakers, a show where we go behind the headlines each and every week to bring you interviews with pastors, entertainers, politicians, and other notable news figures. On today's Newsmakers, actor Kirk Cameron joins us to talk all about his new kids TV show, but he also talks about his solution to our ever chaotic cultural mess. Let's welcome Kirk to Newsmakers. So, Kirk, you have another amazing project that you're working on now, Adventures with Iggy and Mr. Kirk. And this is obviously it's kind of in line with what you've been doing, but it's it's different when it comes to entertainment, kids entertainment. What led you into this? Well, it's got a great little name, doesn't it? Adventures with Iggy and Mr. Kirk. Now, I play Mr. <laughs> Kirk. Uh, oh, I thought I thought you played Iggy, so I'm glad you cleared you cleared that up and, for me. And we've got this amazing puppeteer who worked with Jim Henson and the Muppets for decades and Iggy is a little iguana and he is so adorable. All the kids absolutely love him in the little samples that we've done so far. So this, this TV show for kids is an outgrowth of all of the momentum that's been building from the children's books that brave books. And I have been, um, creating, going to these public libraries, contra the drag queen story hours and reading books of Christian virtue to children talking about things like humility and the fruit of the spirit and uh, loving your loving your enemies. Well, we want to get into the screens. We want to teach children biblical moral lessons through their phones and the screen time that every parent uses at some point so that they can do the laundry, so that they can make dinner on car rides to, you know, the soccer field or the grocery store. Uh, and even homeschooling families want children to be able to see stuff that they can trust that will build their character and spark their curiosity while maintaining some semblance of innocence. So think of a new show that is a wildly updated version of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood with high energy, hilarious dialogue, beautiful animated biblical moral lesson stories about the sanctity of life, about the fruit of the spirit, about uh, the first and second amendment, and guest stars at every turn. So it's super fun. And we are in fundraising mode right now because we don't want, we're not uh, getting money from Hollywood or a big streaming platform uh, to pay for it because when you do the strings attached and then they end up sabotaging the content and it goes woke. So we're doing a crowdfunding thing like the chosen uh, who better to put the chosen together than the people who want to see it most, who better to put a TV show together than moms and dads and grandparents who would trust me with the content and we fund it. So we're asking people to go to watchbrave.com and you can get really exciting, unique rewards like have one of your grandkids be a minor role in one of the episodes of our That's TV awesome. show or be an executive producer and get two red carpet VIP tickets to the premiere in Nashville, Tennessee with cool after parties where you get to come meet the cast and Iggy the Iguana and all that stuff. So those rewards come for different levels of support. We want to fund two seasons of the show. Uh, we begin filming in just a month. And again, people can check out how to do that at watchbrave.com. You know, it's, it's such an interesting project and a much needed project. What have you learned most about not just these issues, but the people in this country who have shown up, you know, consistently to hear from you, what have you learned on that journey of going around and just doing what you've been doing with these books? Well, I'm getting messages from people uh, that friends of mine who are all about the work of bringing transformation to culture. And they're saying it, it appears that people are finally waking up and I resonate with that as I go to churches and schools and libraries, people are waking up and realizing that um, the, the dystopian circus show is here and the ringmasters like it. And if we just keep drinking the Kool-Aid and eating the cotton candy and stay entertained uh, by, by all this crazy stuff, it's just going to get worse. And so we, we, we need to actually like leave the circus and we need to start getting back to the work of transforming culture and creating the reality that we want for our kids. 
So this is a chance for everyday people who say, what can I do? Uh, I'm not a big influencer. I don't, uh, I don't have a podcast. I'm, I'm not, you know, a, a celebrity. Well, that's true, but you're a mom and you're a dad, uh, maybe, uh, if you're a parent or maybe, um, you're whatever, whatever it is that God has given you to do, do it with all of your heart, do it to honor God, trust him with the results. And if you want to be a part of a television show that reaches lots of people, here's your chance to join me and help us put it together. Uh, be the executive producer of your own grandchildren and great grandchildren's entertainment by helping us make adventures with Iggy and Mr. Kurt. Just go to watchbrave.com and find one of the rewards that you would like to have and then support us at that level and uh, join in. We can all do it together. I love that. I love that. Well, Kirk Cameron, the show is Adventures with Iggy and Mr. Kirk. People can go over to, what's the link again? Give it to us one more time. Watchbrave.com. Watchbrave.com. And they can contribute to that and be involved in it. Appreciate your time today. Bailey, great to talk with you. Thank you, bro, for all that you're doing. Um, so important. So, so meaningful. God bless you. You can go to bravebooks.us for more about the adventures with Iggy and Mr. Kirk. We'll be right back with more newsmakers in just a moment. Welcome back to Newsmakers. Next up, we're welcoming Chris DeFlorio. He's a former New York City cop who is now on a mission to battle the demonic. He has an absolutely incredible story and a new book that we'll be talking about. Let's welcome him here to Newsmakers. So, Chris, I always love getting to connect with you. You have a very interesting ministry. It's one that some people might not have a lot of familiarity with, and it's dealing essentially with evil. And you have a new book called Into Darkness. Uh, let's let's just start with your journey, because yeah. you are a former cop, right? So you were in law enforcement. Talk a little bit about obviously working as a cop. And then having an epiphany that evil is something that is real. Take us through how you came into that. Yeah, I, I worked uh, with the NYPD for 20 years. Uh, and, you know, in, in that kind of work, you see the, the worst evil that you can imagine. Um, even before that, I was a paramedic with the uh, New York City Fire Department. So you're still involved working with the cops. You're seeing, you know, you're seeing a, a lot that uh, most people, thankfully, don't get, you know, don't have to see. Um, so when I was working that you, st you know, you start to put things together and you start to wonder what's behind this evil, you know, there, there's evil that, you know, human beings are accountable for, but, you know, you're, you're seeing these, these really dark, uh, events happen and being a Christian, you start to see things from two worldviews, not just, uh, you know, uh, uh, the physical worldview, but the spiritual. And when I was there, then I started to think what's behind there. And when you learn about the devil, you learn about the, you know, the, the author of evil. Um, and I had specific events happen to me during my midnight patrol years, uh, right after I became a Christian that really woke, I would say woke me up into the spiritual world of, of, you know, good and evil directly, tangibly. And, uh, that sent me on a journey, you know, into where we are today. Now, you're in this ministry, people call you, and, and a lot of media outlets have written up the work that you do, they call you for help. They call you for help because they're dealing with the demonic, they feel like, or maybe they feel like they're dealing with it, and you have to kind of go in and vet it. I'm sure there are cases that don't always shape out to be what people think it is, but but you get thousands of phone calls. Talk a little bit about what this ministry, and I know that it's it's probably changed in some ways, but what this ministry actually looks like in a practical sense. You're an investigator by nature. It's what you've done. You go and you investigate. Take us through a little bit. If I were to call you right now and say, hey, this is going on in my house. I'm, I'm petrified. Please come help. What does that look like? Well, you know, the, the first phone call is a very detailed interview because you're really learning about the complainant as well, the victim of what's going on. You really want to get down to uh, a lot of the details um, that maybe they don't even think is important. So again, you know, just to keep going back to it, having the medical background and the police investigation skills, you know, I like to know about the medical history. I like to know about how long this has been going on. Um, have, has anybody else witnessed it? And then you want to, when you, when you take those skills and you're going to the spiritual aspect of this, now a lot of times you'll hear, you'll hear uh, uh, something very minor to them, 
that will really be pertinent about how this opened up, how maybe the devil came in. Um, so I want to look for that opening because a lot of times it goes back way before what they're experiencing now. It could be years earlier. Uh, what are some of those before you even yeah. what are some of those openings that are common that because you've, you've had so many of these phone calls that you would say these are the things I see most often? Uh, I mean, you, people will call a lot uh, that they're having activity in their home, that they're seeing things or hearing noises. Um, see, you have those three stages. You have infestation, oppression, possession. So a lot of calls, I would say, actually or at, at the oppression stage already, where, it's a, where people feel it's affecting them um, in their lives, their marriage, their, uh, you know, their work, anything, their home, they're getting sick. Uh, so I'm looking right there. Spiritually, I want to know how maybe their lifestyle was, because lifestyle is a very, very big part of this with a lot of people. You have people who live a certain way. You know, if we live, you know, a lifestyle that's not pleasing to God, and you know we know what that is with, with with a lot of the aspects. You know, you're opening up that doorway for the devil to come in. Um, so I start right there. I mean, there's other times where I have to go dig deeper, and I had a few where people have a curse put on them. You know, they have an argument with somebody, or they're telling me they were in uh, some other country, and it lines up perfectly. I've had one where actually, excuse me, where. Uh, it was definitely, it was proven that this other family from Italy put a curse on this family who were the victims. And I can't go too much into it, but it was, it was terrible. And it was so clear that the witch even came forward and said, I'm the one who did this 20 years ago and I can't take this curse off. So, you know, there's a lot in this little time. It's hard to explain, but there's a lot of ways that that door can be opened. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a big responsibility when you're dealing with this this sort yeah. of content and these sorts of issues that people have. You know, my, my final question for you, and, and I love having you on, and you're going to come back again soon. I'm sure we'll dig into some some other stuff. But your book, Called Into Darkness, you wrote this. You put these stories out there. You explained some of the ins and the outs, going much deeper than we were able to do today. Yeah. What do you want to accomplish with this book? You know, the a big reason I wrote this book was because of the misconceptions of what Harmony and I do and that it's not happening. So to be able to, to write a book about how, you know, God, you know, really equipped us step by step into, into really into, into his kingdom, you know, saving us at the same church service, sending us out to fight the devil on this kind of level, a very big uh, concept in my life is, you know, know your enemy. You have to know who you're dealing with in order to have that successful Christian life and to stay away from the, the schemes and tactics. So I kind of lay that all out. And just one more thing, I just wanted to say something I didn't expect to happen as I was writing this book that is really, you know, something that uh, I'm very happy about is that people are telling me how they started to see um, the divine path in their own lives. You know, there's a lot of lost people who really are looking for their place in this world you know, even in life and in ministry. So, you know, I, I just wanted people to be encouraged as well, reading this book in their own lives. Well, that is a powerful message. And the book is called Called Into Darkness. Chris, as always, appreciated having you on today. Thanks, Billy. Great time. You can get to Florio's book, Called Into Darkness, Two New York City First Responders Battle the Supernatural Wherever Books Are Sold. This is Newsmakers on the CBN News Channel. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Newsmakers on the CBN News Channel. For our final segment, we sat down with former NFL star Tim Tebow to learn about his heroic quest to free kids from human trafficking. Let's welcome Tebow to Newsmakers to talk about that effort, his faith, and more. Tim, your foundation has announced the Unknown and Unfinished campaign. What can you tell us about this? Well, that is something that is um, near and dear to our heart because we believe it's one of the worst evils in the world. Um, when you look at the world of, uh, of trafficking and child exploitation, um, there's so many people that lives are at stake and lives are on the line every single day. And 
this really stems back to all the way to last year's campaign, the unknown campaign, because of the over 50,000 boys and girls that um, their abuse can be seen in uh, by law enforcement in images and videos, but yet uh, there's over 50,000 that haven't yet been identified. And that's why we called it unknown. And so we have to be able to identify them through technology, through legislation, through law enforcement, through operations to identify them, but then to be able to rescue them. And so, you know, instead of moving on to another campaign this year, we said, no, we, it is too important. Although we have made strides and in Congress, we made strides in operations. We made strides with rescues. We made strides with identifying and technology. There's so many more we have to get to. And so that's why we called it unknown and unfinished, because we got to get to as many of these boys and girls as possible. Um, and and when we look at this scale, just so people can understand it within the Billy, within the last 12 months, there's been over 500,000 unique IP addresses that have downloaded or shared images or videos of children under the age of 12 being abused. And we know wow. that on uh, 55 to 85% of those um, sharers and downloaders are also hands-on offenders. And your average offender has 13 victims. So when you do the math on that, and I'm not very good at math, I was homeschooled and dyslexic, right? But I know that it's a lot. I know that that's a lot of lives there at stake. That's a lot of boys and girls. I mean, all of these are under the age of 12. Like, what are we talking about? And yet, why it's such a big deal to us that we get, want to talk, and I'm grateful to be able to share with you and share with other people, is because it's also something that's going under the radar that not a lot of people are talking about. This isn't something that's brought up on the news a lot. It's not something that's being shared but in my opinion, it's one of the worst evils in the world, and it's also one of the fastest growing evils in the world. Has there been a specific story, and I know this is probably a hard question because there are so many stories that you're encountering as a result of your work, a child, an individual, maybe a circumstance that has stuck out to you as one that you can't shake or one that has moved you in a particularly deep way? I would say there's probably, oh gosh, I would say there's probably been hundreds that have really um, wrecked me. Um, but I probably one of the, the first ones that, that I would say is there's an incredible young girl that I've had the privilege to be around many times. And we have the privilege to be able to care for. And her story is a horrific story. Her courage is unmatched by many and what she has overcome after years and years of being abused and sold by the people that were supposed to love her the people that were supposed to to teach her faith, hope, and love, the people that were supposed to protect her were the first people to sell her, the first people to abuse her, the first people to hurt her. And um, just getting the privilege of, of, of getting to know her and just loving her and seeing her blossom. And then uh, before I, I testified in, uh, to Congress um, this year, um, she went to some of the team and said, I, I want to share a, a message with Timmy. And she, the night before, the team sent it to me. And uh, it was a voice note. And it was this incredible young girl's voice note. And she was just sharing some really sweet things. And at the end of it, um, she was saying, thank you. Because no one has ever spoken up for us that I've ever heard. My whole life, no one's ever spoken up. And I was just thinking, man, I've done I've done so little. I've done pretty much nothing. You're the you're the incredible one. You're the courageous one. Man, I just played a, a silly game trying to put a fake pigskin inside a rectangle, inside another rectangle. You're the hero. And stories like that remind us what matters. And it's just so easy in life to forget, to forget what matters. It's so easy in life to forget. You know, I, one of the things that I'm, convicted and reminded of often is, man, my energy and effort and passion for a game, let's just take the game of football. Man, I loved it. I was passionate. I was willing to sacrifice. I played. I gave up vacations. I gave up off days. I gave up the food I wanted to eat. I trained. I played with broken bones. I gave up so many things. Why? So that I could be a little bit better in a game so I could make a team. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but I'm saying when you put that in comparison to what I've to the effort, intensity, and focus I've had for, for hurting people, man, I hope it's so much greater. But yet when I look back at what my greatest uh, strain has been for, so many times it's been for a game or something that doesn't matter. And man, I hope when my life is over that my greatest energy, strain, passion was for things that really are going to last because they truly matter because they're for things and people 
that are near and dear to the heart of God. Yeah, and th- and that is so powerful, and everybody can relate to that. We all struggle with that, right? The the temporal, the here and now, going for those things, and yet here you are, you are doing that with unknown and unfinished. Where can people go if people are listening to this or watching it, and they're thinking, "I want to be involved. I want to help." How can they get involved and help? They can go to the timtoafoundation dot org and they can check it out. Um, and if they want to be involved, man, that w- that would be awesome, and we would love it. Um, we want to be on the same team. But I would also encourage, you don't have to join us, but I do believe there's some place for you to join. There's some place for you to make a difference. For every single one of us, there is a place that we can step in, we can stand up, we can fight for those that can't fight for themselves, we can love those that the world hasn't loved, we can care for those that are starving for hope. All of us have the chance to make a difference. Why? Because we serve a big God and, and our God has given us purpose. As long as we have breath, we have purpose. What does purpose even mean? The reason something is done, used, created, or exists. And we are here for a purpose. And that purpose isn't just about us. Yes, we get to be part of it, but the purpose is greater than us. To be able to make an impact in the world. And and I just believe that every person listening, I, I, I hope that they know that they do have purpose. That their life has such value and significance. And they would use that for something bigger than themselves. Well, I love that. And the campaign is unknown and unfinished. Appreciate your time today. Oh, man. So appreciate it. Thank you so much for caring about this. Thank you for not looking away. And thank you for being willing to talk and, and, and bring this to the world. Very grateful, Billy. Thank you, man. You can go to TimTebowFoundation.org for more about Tebow's incredible efforts. We'll be right back in just a moment with more Newsmakers. That's all for Newsmakers. Thank you for watching and be sure to head on over to the CBN News YouTube channel. That's where you will find the full interviews that you saw on today's episode. Plus, you can check out our new Daily Newsmakers podcast. We feature one full interview every single day. It's on all of your favorite podcast platforms, so be sure to subscribe over on your favorite podcast platforms. As for this show, we will see you again next week.